Good afternoon. All right. So um, welcome to uh, Walking the Talk, a CSPTS CPAC webinar series on uh, LGU governance and uh, policy. Okay, so um, the C CSPTS policy seminar series aims to promote public awareness on current issues on food security and uh, sustainability, water and development, social policy and institutions, and local governance. More specifically, the Walking uh, the Talk series on LGU governance and policy features local chief executives who will talk about strategies in managing the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. This afternoon, we are fortunate with us two wonder women, both local uh, government chief executives who will share with us how their city and municipality are moving forward from the COVID-19 pandemic. All right, so to officially welcome us to uh, today's webinar, may I call on Dr. Luena Didi Bacongis, OIC Dean of the College of Public Affairs and Development. Dr. Bacongis, you are mute, on mute. <laughs> okay. Maraming salamat, Dr. Serrano. So, uh, naririnig naman na ako. Okay, sa ating mga marangal na tagapagsalita ngayong hapon na ito, si Mayor Josefina Belmonte at Mayor Angeli M. Maligaya Bautista. Sa mga kasamahan ko dito sa kolehiyo kay Dr. Director Paul Lagi at Director Serrano, at sa lahat ng mga guro at miyembro ng kolehiyo at universidad ng Pilipinas, sa mga tagapakinig natin na nanggagaling pa sa iba't ibang panig ng Pilipinas, Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. It is my privilege to welcome all of you in this webinar series on LGU governance and policy. The Center for Strategic Planning and Policy Studies of the College of Public Affairs and Development seeks to promote awareness and a lively discussion of critical issues related to education, governance, and development. This afternoon, we will discuss a topic that has turned our world upside down. We often hear about COVID-19 pandemic in the news, and we often worry about how bad our situation is. However, this afternoon, we will look at the brighter side of how our local government units are actually working really, really hard and making sure that their constituents are safe. New Zealand and Taiwan are two countries known to be excellent examples of controlling the spread of COVID. These two countries have one thing in common. They are both headed by two female leaders. This afternoon, we will listen to the strategies implemented by not one, but two of our very own female leaders. Statistics show that based on trends, the number of cases in these two LGUs were highest in August and went down in the latter part of October. What strategies help bring down the COVID-19 cases in these municipalities and cities? How are how are they battling the numerous governance problems that they face? Ladies and gentlemen, sit back and prepare to be enlightened by our two speakers this afternoon, two very empowered women leaders. Welcome once again, be challenged and learn. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Maraming salamat po, Dr. Bokongis. All right, at this point, um, let's have the introduction of our first speaker. To introduce our um, speaker, we have with us um, the director of uh, the Center for Strategic Planning and Policy Studies of uh, the College of Public Affairs and Development, Dr. Merlin Paunlagi. Thank you, Ma'am Evely. Good afternoon. Our first speaker put today is now on her second term as the local chief executive 
of the municipality of Magallanes, Cavite. Prior to this, she has also served the municipality as its vice mayor and its Sangguniang Kabataan Municipal Federation president. We can say that our speaker has long been serving the public very well. Why? Because under her leadership, the town of Magallanes have been receiving a number of awards at the regional, at the provincial, regional, and national levels. In 2019 alone, the municipality has received 25 awards. And what are these? Just to mention a few, the municipality has been um, um, a recipient of the outstanding local civil registry office for implementing programs and instituting, uh, instituting measures to uplift the welfare of children, for effectively implementing agriculture programs and for its outstanding contribution to the rehabilitation and preservation of the Manila Bay and its watershed. Isn't it that this is very timely? Tourism has also flourished under his, her administration. With her commitment, the municipality of Magallanes has also been awarded the seal of good local governance not once, not twice, but thrice in consecutive years of 2017, 2018, and 2019. With this, may, I am very proud to introduce one of CIPAP's very own graduates, Honorable Hasmin Angeli Maligaya Bautista. Thank you very much, Mom, Dr. Merlene M. Paunagi, the director of the CSP. Yes. Um, I would like to thank first the, um, the CIPAF, the Center for Strategic Pol uh, Planning and Policy Studies for having me here, for being one of the resource speaker for the Walking the Talk uh, webinar series on LGU governance and policy moving forward, response to recovery from COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, I would like also to uh, greet uh, our OIC Dean for CIPAF, Dr. Rowena T. Bakongis, and of course, my professors at CIPAF, um, Doc, um, Ma'am Mayo Grace Amit, Ma'am Damsel Cortez, Ma'am Rhea Gumasing, Sir Sonny Carrihero, and my other um, professors, Sir Willie Carada and Dr. Sir Javier. Uh, I think nag-retire na po sila. <laughs> So thank you very much for having me here. Um, I would share my, my presentation now. Wait. Okay. So the Magallanes Economic Recovery Program is, aims to motivate and uplift the lives of each constituent and each sector of the society towards enduring the new normal and to focus on economic recovery and its holistic character, intensive livelihood programs, labor and employment, protection and security of the people and their livelihood, resilient and sustainable food production, and application of digital solutions and the use of technology while ensuring the delivery of basic services to the people in the safest, in the safest environment possible. This program makes up a significant wide range package to the economic development of the municipality of Magallanes, since this will definitely help us rebound through budget policy prioritization, focusing on health and disaster and digitalization. Also, this shall improve the food production and supply chain in all agricultural products, venture into new businesses, increase employment and provide better access to basic social services, financial access and support to our MSMEs and different stakeholders and wider multilateral fora for this program. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, for our profile, um, the municipality of Magallanes is one of the 16 municipalities of Cavite, the upland community located in the southwestern part of the province. It composes of five urban and 11 rural barangays. Next slide, please. It has a total land area of 8,293 hectares, out of which 5,577 are agricultural land. 
We are a four-class municipality with an income of 104 million based on our CBMS data 2019 and agriculture. Next slide, please. Our total population is 21,409 and we have household of 5,394. Of the 2019 CBMS population, 11.85% resided in the urban areas, while 88.15% are in the rural areas. Next slide, please. Can you end the video? Um, for the LGU COVID-19 situation, um, as early as uh, January, because we had the Taal eruption situation here in our municipality, we have conducted several meetings in planning and contingency planning with regards to disaster and of this pandemic, COVID-19. So no March po, um, before the national announces its closure of the borders, uh, the municipality of Magallanes issue an executive order of um, no entry, no exit policy. So March po yan nangyari. And then from then on, uh, we have issued several executive orders para po mas maayos ang magiging sistema ng uh, close of, closing of borders ng Magallanes. So for the longest, and I think we are the last town standing um, in um, having the COVID-19 virus. Po, no? uh, so July 18, 2020, when we had our first COVID-19 positive case in the municipality. So next slide, please. So as of November 17, 2020, uh, we have a total number of confirmed cases, 58, and then we have five active cases. Our recovery is 51, total death is two, and total number of suspected cases is six. So out of which, um, breakdown of cases po na, namin comes from the frontliners. So PNP, uniformed men, uh, workers outside Magallanes. So yun po. Next slide, please. Uh, we have conducted mass testing and... Um, as much as we could, kasi po ang munisipyo namin is a fourth class municipality, so wala po kami ganun kaming pera para magkaroon po kami ng isang molecular lab. That's why we have um, initiated a MOA between the Hospital of Imus. And uh, may MOA po kami doon kung saan naglaan po kami ng pondo para po um, meron po kaming... Um, slots for the COVID test. So we had a rapid test 268 and PCR swab test 903. Total of 1,171 testings. Next slide, please. Programs and intervention during COVID-19. Next slide, please. One of our uh, many programs during the COVID-19, ano po, yung Saklolo sa Kakulangan program, ito po yung mga hindi po nakakuha ng SAP, binigyan po namin ng 4,000 pesos. Uh, madali po namin nakuha yung data nito uh, dahil po meron po kaming CBMS. Nagkaroon din po kami ng rolling palengke kung saan uh, dinala po namin yung aming palengke sa iba't ibang barangay. We also have a buntis and nanay with 0 to 24 months old baby financial assistance program wherein we uh, we gave uh, 1,000 financial assistance for
naging relief operation program. Ito po yung tinatawag ng iba't ibang LGU. Um, easily, we, are, we have identified all our households kasi nga po, yung aming CVMS ay updated. We also have the Basura Palit Bigas Program. This is um, a program since 2016 when I when I when I seated in the position of mayor kasi po ito po yung bawat basura nila meron pong uh, karampata kilong bigas na binibigay po ang aming munisipyo. So next slide please. Next slide please. Okay, since uh, konti po ang tao, konti din po ang mga um, ang mga empleyado ng aming munisipyo, we have uh, initiated an empowered team. So this is the interconnected teams. We have, I'm sorry, can you please go back to the uh, to the previous slide? Preview slide, please. Okay, so we have the incident management team, the checkpoint team, the contact tracing team, isolation team, PIO team, disinfection team, and swabbing team. So, um, dahil nga lang po po konti kami, uh, minaximize po namin kung sino-sino po yung tao namin. Um, Napaka-importante po yung naging ICS training namin, no? incident system training namin kung saan na ready po kami with regards to the planning and uh, operation of uh, resiliency on this kind of disaster. So, yung pong mga department head namin as well as uh, staff namin, employees of the municipality have been, have been through with the ICS um, training. So, more or less, meron na po silang orientation. They are capable of the planning and the operation of disaster works or, uh, or how we uh, interconnect with the different team. We also have the virtual and mental health debriefing to all frontliners. Uh, again, the use of our CBMS community management system for fighting COVID-19 kasi mas uh, naging madali po yung wala po kaming duplication ng pagbibigay namin ng SAP, pagbibigay na ayuda, uh, na, na nalaman po namin agad kung sino po yung mga vulnerable sector, kung sino po yung mga OFWs, we have database of that, kung sino po yung mga LSIs in our community. We also have the text blast. Uh, ito po yung parang identification card na rin po ng aming community. So, bawat uh, cellphone po ng uh, magalenyo ay nakaregister po dito sa text blast namin. And with this text blast, we also have the uh, easy and fast um, information approach updating of uh, what is going on in our community. We also have the QR code. Ito po yung contact tracing application code na uh, nakalagay din po sa mga establishments, sa mga commercial establishments, and even the public buildings. At kung wala po kayong cellphone, we we issue, yung, yung magalenyo namin, we issue a QR code. Para po at least, kung wala silang cellphone, okay lang din po. Uh, namomonitor pa rin po namin kung saan sila pumunta and the like. We also have uh, we. This is a, a new program, and ano we initiated two months ago the Magallanes News Channel, which is uh, we use uh, technology and digitalization in order to reach people, to update people, and to engage with them, even with this pandemic. Because po iba ng situation natin, so. Um, ginamit po namin yung social media para po at least um, yung engagement na with our community is still there even if it's not um, face to face. Next slide please. So for the economic stat status, we have policies um, regarding economic recovery. The we have several executive 
order, the organization of the Municipal Development Council, the project monitoring team, the joint inspection team, the incident management team, finance committee, economic recovery team, and the price control. We also have several ordinances like the payment relief ordinance during ECQ due to COVID-19, collection of barangay clearance fee for application for business permit transactions, smoke-free ordinance, ordinance regulating the operation of pig, poultry, and other livestock animal farms, ordinance fixing the rental rates and charges for heavy equipment farm tractors, revised revenue code, the Muscovado as one pound one product, and our market code. For the local government unit, we have economic recovery team, the joint inspection team, and the incident management team. Uh, for the civil society organizations, out of our 15 CSOs, we have seven stakeholders or CSOs related to economic. Uh, that, that, uh, that, uh, these are Magallanes Women's Multipurpose Cooperative, Magallanes Samahang Magsasama ng Kay Apas at Medina, Multipurpose Cooperative, the Pacheco Agrarian Reform Beneficiaries Association, Magallanes Municipal Employees and Community Credit Cooperatives, Rural Improvement Club, Magallanes Business Owners Credit Cooperative, and Magallanes Tricycle Operators and Drivers Association. Next slide, please. So for our uh, farmers organization, we have 12. Uh, for LGU-owned or infrastructure, we have public market, farm to market roads, multi purpose, and DTI negotiation center. We have a tourism area, the Buhay Forest, the Utol Falls, and the Mount Marami Jump Off. We also have um, business establishments with 539 with permit and only 20 without permit yet. Next slide, please. For our economic status, the employment rate for I uh, for the working population we we have a 7.20 percent so meron po ka, ay, we have a yeah working population rate in 2019 we have a 5.22 percent and labor force participation rate we have a 45.90 and uh, 71.30, sorry, um, let me correct that. The working population rate is 7.30%. So all in all, we have an employment rate of 94.77. Next slide, please. LGU best practices on economic recovery. So... This development objective, I said it earlier. Next slide na po. Next slide, please. So, um, with this pandemic, sobrang challenging po siya, no? especially humahanga po ako sa lahat ng mga mayor ng buong Pilipinas because this really a challenging time for all of us. Pero sabi ko nga, hindi din po tapat tayo mawala ng um, drive in order for us to move forward and establish our economic recovery program. Kaya naman po as early as November, uh, naisip po namin to establish an economic recovery technical working group para po at least ay magkamasama ang mga lahat po ng mga department, lahat ng national agencies na tutulong po para sa ating economic recovery. And um, we also have yung mga programs, yung mga um, activities, lahat po ng mga projects, assistance ay uh, mapagsama-sama namin, ma-integrate na namin, ma-maximize namin in order for us to really have a, a concrete plan on economic recovery. Uh, wala po sanang magiging redundancy dito. So, yun po, meron po kaming TWG in Magallanes. It composed of, uh, of course, the municipal mayor, or truly the municipal administrator, 
the BPLO, the PESO, the MSWDO, police officers, TESDA, private organizations like um, the different cooperatives, the different farmers cooperatives, and um, and the like. So the ER team aims to create a synchronized economic recovery programs where the LGU and the CFOs both have counterpart and contribution in reviving the business, labor, and employment, tourism, and agriculture in Magallanes. So meron din po kami, since uh, tinamaan po kami ng ASF nito and nagkaroon po kami ng penalty with the EMD, lahat po ng aming mga piggery, uh, backyard piggery, piggery business po dito, poultry business sa aming uh, bayan, ay nagkaroon po ng penalty of 10,000 each. So uh, naisip po namin to introduce the rabbit racing in Magallanes. Since uh, we have the Tierra del Menor here in our town, um, nakipag-partner po tayo sa may-ari at um, uh, we are seeing the possibility of a rabbit racing in Magallanes. Next slide, please. So we also have the rolling palenque. So tuloy-tuloy po ito. The business one-stop shop, local recruitment. So kahit po pandemic ngayon, ginagawa po namin sa local recruitment activity is through social media din po. Uh, partnership with Foundation and Magallanes Farmers. Well, in 2018, um, nagkaroon po kami ng partnership with Jollibee Foundation wherein there is entrepreneurship program kung saan po holistic po ang approach sa mga farmers namin. So from, from the farm, from the technology, from doing business to marketing ay tinutulungan po kami ng Jollibee Foundation. Uh, we also have one pest control system kung saan po lahat ng poultry um, owners namin ay mayroon pong isang pest control system kasi po nagka-problema po kami sa langaw dito. So we uh, that's that's our solution. We also have annual farmers forum and other uh, LGU economic programs. Next slide please. So for our economic recovery program, uh, with programs, projects, and activities, we have subdivided it into seven sectors. No, uh, we have the macro economy, economy wherein the budget prioritization um, on three areas and the investment in equipment and engagement in the multilateral for all the PTAs. We also have the production sector because we are an agricultural municipality, uh, food production and supply chain, introduction to new ventures, tractor service of farmers trainings, purchase of supplies and equipment, subsidy for land preparation, purchase of vegetable seeds, purchase of rice seeds, irrigation facility. Uh, yung irrigation facility po namin napaka laking tulong sa bayan ng Magallanes because no? we have put up a six solar irrigation facility to uh, to help our farmers here in Magallanes. Assistance to animal dispersal, assistance for fingerlings dispersal. In terms of our industry, um, our infrastructure is ongoing. The electricity and internet connections, they are Converge, PLDT, and the like. Uh, our water supply security and other industry. Like for example, po ngayon po, uh, I'm I'm having a discussion with the Solar Solar Philippines. Uh, they will be putting up a solar farm here in our town. So yun po malaking tulong din po sa amin yun. Uh, another sector is the MSMEs. So the building electronic BPLs into integrated BPLs, assistance to MBOCC and TICME. These are uh, cooperatives no? to link to other agencies that could help them.
So in tourism, uh, ito po bagong-bago pa lang. Uh, as I said a while ago, we have launched to go the Bangalianes News Channel kung saan po uh, binibigyan ng updates ito. Lahat po ng achievements, lahat ng nangyayari sa bayan ng Magalianes ay uh, ini-air po namin uh, through social media, through Facebook Live. And we also have a uh, life and entertainment um, segment, the Maligayang Buhay. Uh, and we also reopening our tourist attraction like the Buhay Forest, the Tud Falls, and the Mount Marami Jump Off. Labor and employment. We have several, like online local recruitment activity, Magallanes Job Vacancy Monitoring Bulletin, online education, health sector employment, waste management sector employment, uh, Magtoda Express. Ito po kakalunch lang po namin yesterday. Uh, ginawa po kasi namin kasi I think this is the very first uh, in Cavite, no? Uh, medyo ginaya lang din po namin kung ano po yung uh, konsepto ng Lala Move, ng Grab, sa Metro Manila. Since ang Lala we are the farthest town here in Cavite, ang hirap po magpa-deliver. So sabi ko po, since ang Toda ang pinaka-apektado during the pandemic, why not uh, sila, sila po ang magbe-benefit dito sa uh, program na ito. So we have launched Magallanes Toda Express. So, dyan po magpapadeliver po sila, kung magpapapick up po sila, sila po ang uh, yung mga online sellers po namin, hindi na sila ang magde-deliver, kundi ito na lang pong magtoda ang magde-deliver para sa kanila. We have online pool of skills. We also have um, programs for our OF livelihood programs, mandatory field health application, water security policy like the rainwater catchment. Kasi po medyo mahirap po dito sa amin ng tubig. Ang kuryente po medyo nagpa-functuate because we, on, we only have a secondary uh, secondary phase. So hindi pa po kami three phase. Kaya po pag bumaba ang kuryente, naapektuhan po yung mga submersible pumps na nawawalan din po kami ng tubig. So sabi ko po, um, through an ordinance din po ay magkaroon po ng rainwater catchment facility ang bawat bahay. Next slide, please. So, for the services, we have Ugnayan Sanayon, provision of business package, livelihood program, which includes financial assistance and trainings, insurance and security, especially to our farmers, Kasi po pag halimbawa may mga disaster at uh, binagyo, uh, mas maganda po na naka-insured po yung mga farms nila, yung mga poultry nila para po at least hindi naman po ganun yung, um, yung dagok po sa kanila. Access to financing, migration for LSIs and OFWs, skills development, skills retooling, IT skills, information and communication technology development, digitalization, seminars, trainings, capacity, and online or face-to-face -face following the health protocols. So moving forward, next slide, please. Moving forward, um, we are we have ongoing projects like our public market. So first time po ito kasi po ang alam po kami dito sa bayan ng Magallanes is talipapa. So, unti-unti um, po, um, ginagawa po namin yung aming public market. We also have a slaughterhouse para po uh, pag may public market na po kami, dito na rin po ang katayan. Mas uh, safe din po kasi ito sa mga uh, magalenyo namin sa community. And um, Kubo Hotel at Buhay Forest. So... We also have a partnership with Rotary Las Piñas headed by Dr. Yoli Aranya for uh, an establishment of Tesla School in the Municipality of Magallanes. Also, uh, magpapagawa din po kami ng public cemetery namin for future income generation sa aming munisipyo. Dahil po, um, onti na rin po ang mga uh, lupa dito para po sa aming mga namamatay. Kaya po, there is really a need for a public cemetery. Next slide, please. 
So there you have it. Thank you. Uh, we smile as one. So smile because this is my trust. Uh, social services, uh, sound management or good governance sustainable infrastructure, livelihood, environment, and education. And we have a core value of providing a culture of service excellence and modesty through innovation, transformational leadership, and people empowerment. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you very much, Mayor Jazz, for that comprehensive presentation of your municipality's pro-people strategies to manage the impacts of uh, the pandemic. Now, um, later on, um, we'll be entertaining some questions, okay, uh, during the uh, Q&A. Now, uh, maybe remind, uh, therefore, our participants uh, to send your questions if you have any. So for our Zoom participants, you may uh, use our Q&A window. You can uh, use our chat box, okay, for your questions. And for those joining us um, on Facebook, Okay, you can uh, type your questions in the comment section of uh, uh, of our Facebook uh, Facebook uh, live. Okay, live streaming. Now, um, yeah. So later, okay, um, we'll be opening the floor. Okay, for questions. But in the meantime, okay. So we need to proceed to our next speaker. Um, and once again, may I call on uh, Doctor Paunlagi, okay, to introduce our next uh, speaker. Thank you very much, Dr. Evely. Um, our next speaker, Maria Josefina Belmonte, is the 11th mayor of Quezon City since June 30, 2019. Recently, she was chosen as one of the 10 outstanding mayors of the Philippines by the Gawad Filipino Awards. Aside from being the local chief executive of Quezon City, she is currently the executive vice president of the League of Cities in the Philippines. Prior to this, she served as the Vice Mayor and Presiding Officer of the 18th to 20th Quezon City Councils from 2010 to 2019, where she was awarded with various recognitions from international and local organizations, such as Most Outstanding Vice Mayor by the Gawad Sulu ng Bayan, two-time most outstanding city council in the Philippines under her leadership, and the Mother's Heart Heritage Award as Outstanding Woman in Local Legislation in Service to Women and Children by the Women's Federation for World Peace, among others. So our uh, speaker, second speaker is a multi-awarded local government executive. The COVID-19 pandemic has posed tremendous challenge given that Quezon City is the biggest city, not only in terms of land area, but population as well. Despite these challenges, the city is able to consistently improve its situation by working with other stakeholders, both from the public and the private sector, while also implementing strict regulations and encouraging community compliance. To tell us more of what the city of Quezon City has been doing and will be doing, it is my honor to introduce uh, the second uh, speaker, Mayor Maria Josefina Belmonte. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Mayor. Magandang hapon po, Dr. Merlin. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Ginabati ko rin po si Dr. Evely at saka si Dr. Ruena at syempre po ang ating pong uh, kagalang-galang na mayora ng Magallanes, Cavite, si Mayor Bautista. And sa lahat po na nakikinig sa atin pong uh, uh, well, pagbibigay uh, ulat patungkol sa ating lungsod, isang magandang hapon po. Uh, can I have the first slide, please? So para lang po bilang um, introduction, I'd like to say a little bit about our city, Quezon City, for the benefit of those who are not so familiar. Can, can I go back to the cover page? So ang Quezon City po has about 3.1 to 3.2 million people, although this is, I feel, conservative because I believe there are much more given our experience giving ayuda in the, uh, during the ECQ. No? So tama lang na magkaroon na ng bagong census. Um, we are one-fourth of Metro Manila, and at present po, ang aming pong COVID situation is as follows. We have 95% recovered, 
um, and 2% po of uh, uh, active cases. Pero syempre, yung, yung active cases po namin, madami po kumpara dun kay Mayor Bautista, 509 po. Uh, but that's, uh, that's just 2% of our population. Our positivity rate as of this morning, no, uh, sa pag-ulat po sa amin ng UP professors is 4%. Uh, we have a reproduction rate of less than one. And a, we have um, about 15 contact tracers or tracings per individual that is positive. We have tested about 80,000 people already. Um, that's just in the government. Wala pa yung mga nasa private laboratories or 2.5% of our people. Uh, we are proud because dati, nung nagsimula po ang pandemia, nung March, uh, unang nagkaroon ng kaso dito, we were number three out of the 17 LGUs in Quezon City in terms of number of cases per 100,000. Pero ngayon po, number 15 na lang po ang Quezon City out of 17 uh, LGUs in the NCR region. No? Hindi ko na po masyadong binigyan ng uh, ng uh, attention yung iba pa naming COVID response, I'll just summarize them here so that I can proceed with the recovery uh, aspect of it. No? Pero as of now, we have about 2,000 uh, bed spaces for quarantine um, belonging to about four different uh, buildings. No? Um, yung pinaka-paborito ko po dyan ay yung um, third naming facility kasi we call them HOPE. So may one, HOPE 1, HOPE 2, HOPE 3, at HOPE 4. Yung HOPE 3 po ay favorite ko po because I am a uh, women and children's rights advocate at ito po ay exclusive for families and for uh, breastfeeding mothers and their infants. No? Um, bukod po dyan, uh, we also um, have... Well, the um, three government, well, three local government hospitals. One is a level three hospital, and two are level uh, one hospitals. But they are all um, responsive to COVID. No, so ilan lang po ito sa mga um, aming uh, ginagawa. We also had best practices in terms of uh, things we did sa management of the dead kasi 3% po sa amin ay namatay no that 700 uh, we are we also have a best practice called the special concern lockdown ito po yung tinatawag na granular lockdowns dahil nung nagkaroon po tayo ng MECQ from ECQ uh, hindi na po man naging naging advisable yung isara ang buong lungsod kapag meron pong um, outbreak or meron po tayong spikes. Ang ginagawa po namin sa lungsod ay amin pong um, ina-isolate lang po ang porok o yung kali o yung compound na may, may uh, community transmission uh, for 14 days. Pag sila po ay amin pong uh, ina-isolate, binibigyan po namin ng ayuda, uh, binibigyan po namin ng PCR testing lahat hanggang sa gumaling po. And we have had 68 special concern lockdown area since May of this year. And I'm happy to say in the past two weeks, ay wala na po, po kami yung special concern lockdown areas. So yan po ang uh, pinakabuod ng aming pong COVID response. I'd like to stress some of the, I think, more important things that we have done in addition to the medical interventions. No? So next slide po. So yung unang kaso po namin ng COVID was on March 9. Hindi ko po yan makakalimutan kasi yan po ang pagdiriwang namin ng Women's Day. At habang tayo po ay nagbibigay ng ating State of the Women address, ay ibinalita po sa Jario ay sa sorry sa radio na meron na po tayong isang COVID positive. So isa sa pinaka-challenges uh, namin no is of course yung pagbibigay tulong sa ating pong mga mamamayan no. So 3 mil 3.1 to 3.2 million plus yung mga na-stranded pa dito napakahirap po dahil kailangan din po natin alagaan yung mga naiwan po dito na nagtatrabaho. So we had several programs to address. This of course you're all familiar with the DSWD SAP. Uh, ngunit hindi po lahat ng amin pong mga mama na nangangailangan ay nabigyan po nito. No, only 377,584 were given DSWD SAP. Very challenging kasi yung social distancing component pa lang po niya ay napakalaking uh, hamon na po sa amin. No? Um, so, katulad din po ni Mayor Bautista, we had to give our own SAP. No? That's, we call that QC SAP. At uh, 4,000 pesos din po ang binigay namin sa kabuan na 177,298 families. Meron din po kami tinatawag na kalingang QC. Ito po ay 
2,000 pesos na binigay po namin sa mga vulnerable sectors katulad ng senior citizens, PWDs, lactating mothers, solo parents, scholars, at lahat po ng mga nasa transport sector, maging mga displaced workers, at marami pa pong iba. So that 607,070 individuals were recipients. So yung total combined beneficiaries po na mula lang po sa ating lungsod was 784,368 at ang ginastos po natin for that was 72 million 133,340 pesos sa ayuda lang po yan na pinansyal. No? So next slide po. So dito naman po um, meron din po tayong naitulong uh, sa atin naman pong mga nawala ng trabaho. Katulad ng, ng, ng binanggit din po ni Mayor Bautista who has her own uh, malagrab. Dito po sa Metro Manila maswerte po tayo dahil dito naman po talaga ang home base ng Grab, ng Lala Move at ng Food Panda. So tayo po ay nakipag-ugnayan sa kanila. Uh, meron din po tayong kaugnayan sa Shopee which has been helping our micro-entrepreneurs sell their products online. At uh, sa, sa kabuan po, we are now helping 1,132 drivers mula pa nung MECQ hanggang ngayon uh, sa Grab drivers, Food Panda drivers, and Lala Move, uh, and Lala Jeep. Meron din po tayong tinatawag na Lala Jeep program. No? Uh, bukod dyan, uh, we have like uh, Mayor Bautista also something called Fresh Market on Wheels. So ang ginawa po natin dahil ang ayuda po natin ay um, bigas lang po at canned goods, hindi po siya talaga healthy, ay ginawa po namin, nakipag-partners tayo sa mga vendors and we hire jeepneys to go to our barangay. So of the 142 barangays in Quezon City, we were able to cater to 104 of these barangays at uh, sila po ay naging beneficiary ng ating Fresh Market on Wheels at natutuwa naman po ako because the vendors who partnered with us earned a total of 25 million pesos uh, throughout this uh, whole uh, pandemic time when they were working with us on this no so um bukod dyan, we had um also a program called community mart this is in part in cooperation with the office of the vice president uh, wherein yung mga palengke po ay through an app yung mga tao mag-order mag, mag na lang po ng gulay sa kanya-kanya ng mga suki tapos dinideliver po sa kanya-kanya ng mga bahay uh, by our various tricycle drivers ang mga toda po natin and our vendors earned a total of 2,269,000 203 in I think a month or two that this program was was uh, in effect no helping 125 vendors so ito po yung karagdagan pa namin tulong and I just want to stress um, that uh, next slide please the most challenging of all of course was giving food packs alam naman po natin na napakahira po talaga noon we had to do this bahay bahay and we gave four um, no five batches of food no, since the beginning of ECQ, uh, ang total number of food packs po na amin pong naipamahagi is 4,125,898 food packs. At kulang pa nga po yun. And that's why I say we need a new census because I feel that we have much more people than we think we have. No, um, But um, the thing that, uh, that is... Uh, important about uh, this program, yung pagbigay po ng food pack, is nakatulong po talaga sa pagkuha pag, uh, ng tamang datos. Pagtungkol sa ilan ang mga nakatira, ilan yung mga dayo, ilan yung mga nagtatrabaho na hindi naman taga doon, etc. No? So maganda nga na yan, um, exercise in data gathering. No? So bukod dyan, because we learned from the difficulty of distributing food packs, we decided that one strategy we should adopt is really food security and self-sufficiency. No. Kung kaya, uh, sa kalagitnaan pa lamang ng pandemya ay naglunsad na po tayo ng mas malawakang urban farming program. No. So um, for those who are familiar with my advocacies, actually, we started the urban farming program in Quezon City when I was still the vice mayor. Um, uh, this is with co in, the co in cooperation with uh, then Undersecretary Bernardo Romulo Puyat of the Department of Agriculture. And we already... Um, developed this program for the past 10 years. But under the uh, quarantine, we decided to expand on this because we felt that people needed to be self-sufficient and have a source of food, you know, apart from the ayuda that the government was giving, which is really not enough. So um, as of this time, uh, we have already distributed, with the help of the DA, 15 aquaponic units you know, sa ating pong mga barangay na, inter na may space. You know? we, have, um, we have established 166 urban farms, and we have identified and started cultivating in six uh, community model farms. Pag sinabi po natin community model farms, 
higit pa sa isang ektarya po ang laki po ng, ng mga ito. And we have since identified 298,672 square meters of land which can still be used to develop urban farming. So ito po ang isa sa mga centerpieces pa ng recovery program po namin dito po sa amin pong lungsod. Next slide po. So bukod po dyan, meron din po kaming stimulus package na binibigay po sa ating mga MSMEs. Dito po sa aming lungsod, mahigit 95% po ng aming mga negosyante ay micro, small, and medium enterprises. And we wanted to help them stay afloat. Ayaw po namin silang magsara. So the City Council budgeted 700 million pesos para po makapagbigay kami ng stimulus package. And this is, a, is, this is in the form of a wage relief uh, package kung saan po uh, pwede mag-apply isang small business at isang micro business and kapag pinasa po nila lahat ng mga requirements at ng mga criteria uh, we will pay for half the salaries of their employees for a total of three months. So sa kasalukuyan, nasa batch 2 na po kami for micro businesses uh, with 125,287 Uh, 125 million 287,500 uh, spent already for this program, benefiting 6,425 employees. And dito na naman po sa small businesses, 53 million, no benefiting 3,700 employees. So, uh, marami pa pong pondong na iiwan dito, and uh, we will continue with this because this is. Uh, turned out to be one of our most successful uh, pro uh, post uh, uh, COVID programs. No, um, I would like to stress that uh, as of today, uh, we have already spent a whopping 12 billion pesos on COVID relief. Kasi nagtayo pa po tayo ng laboratory, um, lahat po ng testing, lahat po ng uh, aming community-based uh, Um, testing, marem, kasi ang laki po ng aming lungsod, so ang dami pong testing centers, hindi lang po iisa. Uh, at lahat po ng mga pinamimigay po natin, mga mask, pang binibili mga PPE, etc. And we had to buy vehicles for our contact tracers. Napakarami pong gastos ng aming lungsod, ventilators for our hospitals, x-ray machines, etc. So, ganyan na po kalaki ang aming pong nagastos um, in the, as, of, as of today. Next po. So, ito naman po ang aming recovery plan. Alam mo, we were quite optimistic. Inisip kasi po natin, siguro by May or June, wala na pong COVID. Kasi hindi naman po tayo pamilyar sa COVID. No? We, are, we have watched films on Ebola, on HIV, on SARS, on MERS. But you know, this is a totally different animal. And um, just based on the experience with the other diseases, we were thinking na, ay siguro by June, mawawala na yan. Uh, Siyempre, optimistic kami noon. Alam naman natin, hanggang ngayon, nandyan pa rin siya. Very much alive and kicking in our communities and it's just a matter of, of containing the virus and waiting for the vaccine. No? But um, as early as June, we already passed a Quezon City COVID-19 recovery plan. Bakit po kailangan magpasa? Kasi syempre, nag, napasa na po ng sanggunian yung budget namin for 2020. But we had to re reprogram the projects and programs in our budget uh, to align with the needs of the time. Kaya kinailangan pa po namin mag-craft ng panibagong um, budget at uh, kailangan pong ipasa pa ito ng sanggunian panlunsod. And this uh, covers the period of July 1, 2020 to Um, June 30, 2022. So for two years po itong recovery plan po natin. Pero uh, gusto ko lang pong bigyan ng diin dahil po uh, hindi po tayo pwede maglihis sa ating po mga uh, planning tools. Ay consistent pa rin naman po ang ating recovery plan sa ating pong comprehensive land use plan or CLUP sa ating pong 14-point executive agenda. Ito po yung aking uh, plataforma de gobyerno na aking pong sinusundan. At syempre yung comprehensive development plan po natin na, na ginawa po ng ating CDP or, or City Development Council pala. No? Uh, na binubuo po ng mahigit um, 3,000 NGOs no? uh, at pati na rin ang mga government, uh, ba ba uh, local barangay leaders po natin kasama dyan. No? And then of course, I also use as a basis for planning the sustainable development goals because I am an advocate for, um, for of course, anti-poverty concerns and environmental concerns. At talaga naman, prior to the sustainable development goals, uh, we were also... Uh, using uh, the um the UN uh, uh, guidance you no know, for us in making our various agenda of governance you no know, like the millennium development goals so next po So our recovery plan focused on the following sectors, the social sector, the economic sector, the environmental sector, the infrastructure sector and the institutional sector um next po 
So meron po tayo mga gustong bigyan ng tugon or bigyan ng pansin in these various sectors. So I'm just going to talk about what we've already started because some of these have not yet been started. But the economic sector, based on the uh, call of the times to address COVID, which is probably here to stay for another six months, I just found out na the government, the national government, has ordered about 60 million vials of uh, vaccines from Pfizer and from uh, other sources. Pero that, of course, is not going to go that's not enough for all of our people and that will take a while to distribute. No? So we'll probably be living with COVID for another six to six months to another year. Yan po ang aking tingin na pinaghahandaan po namin. No? So ang amin pong mga uh, priorities are food security, like I mentioned, health and pharmaceuticals, transportation, tourism, arts and culture, uh, developing growth hubs, um, and business livelihood and employment recovery. So ito po yung aming mga... Uh, uh, key programs for the economic sector recovery plan. So far, ito po yung nagawa pa lang po namin since it's only naman the end of 2020. Next slide po. So ito, sa, sa una, ang, ang unang ginawa po namin is to make sure that it is easy to engage with the city government. Kung kaya't meron na po tayong tunay na business one-stop shop. Ano pong ibig sabihin ng tunay na business one-stop shop? Ibig po sabihin lahat po ng kailangan ninyo para makuha po ninyo, ang inyong mayor's permit ay napapaloob sa iisang struktura lang o na iisang lugar lang. No? So um, in actually one day or even in a few hours, kung kukonti lang ang tao, you can already comply with all of the requirements. Um, provided that wala kayong pagkukulang. No? Um, and that's our uh, one-stop shop. We also launched three programs, Biz Easy, Build Easy, and Pay Easy. Ang ibig pong sabihin nito, lahat po ng kailangan ninyo uh, upang magtayo ng negosyo, uh, magpagawa ng isang struktura, at magbayad ng buwis ay pwede nang gawing online. No? So this is one of the things that we did um, during uh, the last couple of months. No? Uh, katulad ng binanggit ko, urban agriculture ay ipinag pinalawig po natin. So meron tayong urban farming, katulad ng nabanggit ko, uh, aquaponics, and of course, the City Council has just passed an idle land tax ordinance. Ano pong ibig sabihin nito? Kapag meron po kayong lupang nakatiwangwang, hindi po ninyo ginagamit, nagbabayad kasi po kayo ng idle land tax. Pero kung you transform that piece of property um, into an agricultural land, uh, hinayaan nyo po kaming um, mag-enter into a use of rock agreement with you and uh, we are allowed to plant on your property, you are exempt from paying the idle land tax. So yun po ang, ang pinaka uh, tulong ng sanggulian pandunsod po sa atin. We also have bidded out a total of 174 kilometers of bike lanes. Um, and this is in, in, consistent with my advocacy towards environmental protection because I am really a climate justice advocate as well. And bago pa man ang kapandemia, ginusto ko na po itong gawin. So this just gave me all the more reason to pursue this particular advocacy of mine. No? So um, hopefully with this program, mababawasan ang air pollution, magiging mas healthy ang mga Pilipino, at mababawasan din ang traffic sa ating pong Napakalaking lungsod. Uh, we also have livelihood packages for vulnerable sectors and for MSMEs. Hindi ko nahubabanggitan isa-isa. But the latest, of course, is one that was just in yesterday uh, with UN Women. Um, it is a program called Connected Women. And this is a program that aims to introduce women to digital technologies to enable them to up, um, scale up their productivity. So ito ay para sa women entrepreneurs. No? And uh, um, we also are launching or having a hosting a Quezon City Business Summit come Thursday, uh, two days po from now. This is in cooperation with the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry para po hikayatin ang ating po mga local businessmen to uh, further invest in the city and to generate trust and confidence amongst them para alam nila that they have a government that truly cares and works for their welfare. No? Next po. So social sector naman po. Health, education, and, so and social services are our priorities. Next po. So in terms of health, again, this should be a priority because like I mentioned, we will still be living with COVID as well as other diseases for the next couple of months. And we still want to be prepared in case of the, there is a second wave or a surge. No? So we have um, something called the QC1 hospital command system. Alam naman natin na yung DOH may one hospital command. Pero ang ginawa namin ay pinagbuklod din po namin lahat ng mga hospital dito sa Lungsod to improve on our referral system. No? So uh, we have many many private and public hospitals here at uh, this is our latest 
uh, project. No? Uh, we are also exploring the possibility of having our own um, health um, insurance system bukod sa pill health because alam naman natin, very few now have confidence in pill health and many of these hospitals are asking that the city come up with its own uh, local health insurance system. We are hiring more health workers, of course, at higher uh, salaries, hiring more contact tracers as well. We are also increasing the incentives for the health sector. And of course, like I mentioned, our molecular laboratory has just recently, re recently been inaugurated. Sa larangan naman ng edukasyon, we intend to um, to uh, adapt the new normal by, of course, um, uh, gearing up for more online uh, uh, studies no, or blended learning. So we have already invested about 2.9 billion pesos um, to, um, to, to make sure that this new normal educational system becomes successful. So 176,000 tablets have been distributed to all of our high school students. That's junior and senior high school students. We have also di distributed... Um, school supplies to all of our kinder to grade six students you know, who are doing modular classes. And we have distributed 8,000 laptops for all of the students and faculty of the Quezon City University here po sa amin pong lungsod with three campuses. No? We have also distributed 3,210 laptops for our public school faculty. And lahat po yan, lahat po ito may data allowance po para sigurado po ang connectivity. Um, so social services naman, meron tayong free testing. Like I said, 80,000 already tested. We have an emergency employment program. And in our case, because our priority is urban farming, ang amin pong uh, hinayer para sa emergency employment program ay mga uh, farmers, no? mga um, pwedeng magtrabaho sa ating mga nabanggit na mga community farms. We also have a cash for work program. Ganun din po yung cash for work ay binigay rin po namin sa mga uh, farmers no para talagang uh, we will be known as the farming capital of NCR and of course increase medical assistance sa ating po mga may sakit and we will be we will be launching very soon the Q citizen card this is of course not an original idea this is an idea that of course, I got from my friend, uh, Mayor Abby Binay in Makati, who has a Makati citizen card. But um, I found her system very, very effective. And of course, I borrowed her system. So we will be launching the Q citizen, ca citizen card by December. Lahat po ng mga mamamayan na nung Sudkeso na may card na ito ay mas madaling makakuha ng ayuda. Meron pong database with their information. So we will know um, how to help them more. We will know if it's time for them to get their maintenance medicines, for example. All their information will be stored in a database so that we will be able to provide better for them and be more responsive to their needs. No? Um, at bukod dyan, I just wanted to add, since I really care about our women and children, ayon sa datos na ating pong nakuha, uh, mula po sa iba't ibang mga NGOs, um, domestic violence has increased by 20%. Since the start of the pandemic, dahil nakakulong po sa mga bahay ang mga, uh, mga kababaihan kasama ang kas kanilang mapangobusong mga asawa o, o partners. At uh, uh, because of that, we have opened. So nagbukas na po tayo ng tinatawag nating bahay kanlungan. This is a shelter for victims survivors of uh, violence and abuse. At hindi lang po para sa kababaihan, para din po sa kabataan at sa LGBT sector. Dahil uh, dito po sa Quezon City, we are a gender fair city po. No? Um, we also have something called a Bahay Aruga. And this is for abandoned senior citizens. We also just opened that uh, maybe a month or two ago. Kasi napakarami pong nag-abandon ng kanilang mga elderly dahil sa kahirapan. At kinupkop po namin sila at binigyan po namin sila ng lugar kung saan pwede po silang tumira. So next po, in terms of the environment, I think I have to rush through the next three. So ito po yung mga priorities ng aming recovery plan, sanitation and waste management, lalong-lalo na po ngayon na napakarami pong uh, health-related waste na kailangan po natin talagang i-dispose of properly. Uh, use of green and open spaces, so kailangan palawakin pa po natin ng mga open spaces because of the need for social distancing. And of course, we know that the virus is less transmitted kapag open spaces ang spaces po natin. No? So um, that is one of our objectives. Flood and drainage management. Uh, ito po syempre, alam naman natin ang epekto ng, ng drainage, uh, bad drainage uh, nung nakaraang Ulysses at, uh, at Bagyong Rolly. Plastic products, of course, meron na po tayong ban on, ban on single-use plastics. This has been relaxed during the pandemic, but we will start uh, strictly implementing this again by January of 2021. And of course, environmentally sustainable transport. And we will discuss this um, later. Po. Next slide. 
So this is so far what we've done. We have um, in the works an ordinance creating a sanitation department. So we, hiniwalay na po namin ang solid waste at ang liquid waste management sa isang departamento because this is also consistent with the requirements of the Mandamos ng Manila Bay. No? Um, and we are serious about disposing of our wastes properly. As we know, uh, part of the problem of the environment is um, uh, our waste is not properly uh, disposed of. We're also creating an ordinance. This is naman the policy making or the advocacy component. Um, an ordinance creating the Climate Change and Environmental Sustainability Department. And these two ordinances are already up for second reading sa Sangguni Ang Pandunsod. I already mentioned our ban on single-use plastics. We also have a campaign called Bring Your Own Bottle Campaign or Bring Your Own Container Campaign. Ang ginagawa po natin ay nakikipag-ugnayan po tayo sa iba't ibang mga um, suppliers like Procter and Gamble, um, uh, Unilever, etc. If they can have uh, mga garapon sa ating mga sari sari store, tapos yung mga tao mamimili, they will just fill up their own re recyclable pla uh, containers, no? Uh, para hindi na po tayo uh, gumagamit ng plastic at iba pang mga nakakasama sa ating pong kalikasan. This is something that's very new to us. It will be launched in December. Our very own Quezon City bus system, no? Kasi uh, kulang ang transportation, ang laki ng ating lungsod, hirap na hirap ang ating pong mga mamamayan. Kaya sa pamamagitan po ng Quezon City bus system, which will traverse eight routes just within Quezon City, ganyan po kasi kalaki ang aming lungsod, um, we will be uh, providing transportation for free sa lahat po ng uh, gumamit po ng Quezon City bus system. But eventually, this will no longer be for free. Kailangan po meron na kayong Q-Citizen card para makapag-avail po ng libreng sakay sa ating pong Quezon City bus system. Sa ngayon po, contract of service pa lang po ito but we have plans of buying electric buses uh, para po ma maging environmentally friendly din po ang aming Quezon City bus system. We also have something called the Gora Lane Pedestrianization Project. Uh, Gora stands for something that I, I forgot that it starts with it starts with the G so it's probably green no pero ang ang layunin po nito and this is partly funded by the national government is to improve pedestrianization in our city to get people to walk more and um, and to ride less no motorized vehicles less no so this will be happening in several identified areas of our city and of course, we have an Adopt and Estero program uh, wherein we are going to, to be working with the national government and the city of San Juan uh, to clean up the San Juan River, which is one of the reasons why bumabaha po sa aming lungsod dahil napakadumi po nitong uh, river na ito. Uh, so this is a, a joint project with the national government, with the private sector, and, and with the city of San Juan. Next po. So in terms of infrastructure, um, ito naman po yung mga priorities namin. Health facilities, flood control, like I mentioned, housing. Siyempre, very close to my heart po ang pabahay. Parks and open spaces again, and school buildings. So ito po yung mga nasimula na po natin. Uh, next slide po. So we are building isolation facilities. No? Kasi sa kasalukuyan ng aming pong isolation facilities are schools, um, or our hotels no? or our parts of our hospitals. Pero gusto po namin magpagawa ng isang permanenteng quarantine facility na po. Na yan lang po ang gamit niya para pag nagsimula po ang pasukan, nandyan pa rin po ang facility na ito. So kasama po yan sa priorities. Additional crematoriums kasi uh, na we have one crematorium, ginam ginagamit rin po ito ng iba pang mga LGU. Uh, na walang mga crematorium. Alam naman po natin na kapag COVID positive patient na matay po, kailangan within 12 hours, kailangan na makremate. Kulang po ang aming nag-iisang crematorium. So we're planning to build more. Um, upgrading our health centers. We have um, several, almost 100, I think, more than 100 health centers. No? Lahat po ito, binadyatan po namin para i-upgrade. Ibig sabihin nun, may triaging um, section na po, may wet, may dirty section, may, may clean section para po sa health centers pa lang po pwede na po natin ma-assess kung ang, ang tao po ay may contagious or um, nakakahawang sakit. No? So, um, we, since I'm also an, uh, an advocate for LGBT rights, katulad ng nabagit ko, all our health centers will also have free HIV testing. No? Uh, at uh, gusto, rin, gusto ko rin po magkaroon ng uh, um, 
bak- libreng bakuna para sa mga hayop sa ating pong mga health centers kasi po uh, marami pong mga advocates for animal welfare sa Lungsod Quezon and, I, and this is one of my promises to them. No? So we, we would like to level up our city hospitals. Um, yung dalawa pong nasa level 1 ay magle-level 2 na po hopefully by early next year. Housing, community, and resettlement program. Napakalaking problema po ng aming lungsod. Napakarami po namin informal settlers. Napakarami rin pong nakatira sa mga waterways. And isa po sa aking layunin ay siguraduhin pong meron po tayong sapat na pabahay. At ang ating pong pinaglalaban ay in-city relocation dahil ayaw po natin na, na ila, ilabas po ang ating mga mamamayan. Palibhasa mahirap sila. Tingin ko is not a reason for them to be uh, relocated to a far-flung uh, province. No, I want them to live in the city they belong to. They live in, they grew up in. So in-city resettlement po ang ating pinaplano. We are also going to be renovating our school buildings to include uh, rainwater catchment and of course hand washing facilities. Bakit ko nabanggit po yung hand washing facilities? Kasi ayon po sa aking um, observasyon ha, pag nagpagawa po ng school buildings uh, ang ating mga kongresista, ang ating dating pamahalaan, ay first floor lang po ang may tubig. Pagdating po sa second and third floor, wala na po silang tubig dahil mahina po masyado ang pump ang water pump. So ngayon po, this is my priority to make sure that hand washing facilities are available kahit na nasa third floor ka, fourth floor ka ng paaralan mo. At we would like to make sure also that rainwater is saved and used up uh, to flush our toilets, to water our plants, to keep our city green. We will be building evacuation centers. Uh, like I said earlier, Quezon City has five low-lying barangays and several easily flooded areas and uh, akin to the um, to the uh, advocacy of our president now after Ulysses and Goli, um, we have already actually na una po tayo nag budget na po tayo ng pondo para sa ilang mga evacuation centers na po and we will push through with this plan. We will be redesigning parks and open spaces. Meron na rin po tayong mga plano kung paano po natin palalakihin, pagagandahin at papalawakin ng ating po mga open spaces. Again, as a response to the COVID threat. Uh, among others, of course, because we do like to have open spaces in our city. We do not like to have an urban jungle to live in. At uh, ito po, we have, we have partnered with Project NOAA, uh, the controversial Project NOAA, uh, pero sila po talaga ay maayos na kausap ka at uh, ka-partner and they will be helping us to design a master plan, drainage master plan para po sa ating lungsod, para once and for all, hindi na po band-aid solution sa ating isasagawa sa ating lungsod, once and for all, we can solve the flood problem in Quezon City. And we are investing 20 million pesos for this particular program. CCTV cameras and street lights will also be installed uh, because we believe in the safety of our people. And I really would like for us to copy cities like Tokyo, like London, like Moscow, where halos bawat kalsada, bawat skinita ay may CCTV camera, not only to make sure na nagsa-social distancing ang mga tao, pero para siguraduhin ligtas ang mga mamamayan po ng ating pong lungsod. So last na po, sorry po. Institutional development, uh, maikli lang naman po ito. We're doing rationalization now ng bawat departamento namin. Gusto namin siguraduhin na yung mga existing bureaucracy ng ating lungsod ay akma pa rin sa tawag ng panahon. Um, and we are trying to improve general city services for our city, uh, for our employees, uh, well, for our citizens, and then general city hall services for our employees. No? Marami pa pong kasama ito, pero ito na po yung tatlo na isa-stress ko ngayon. So next po. So we have a hotline, hotline 122. So kung meron po kayong problema, ano man ang problema nyo, emergency, COVID positive, natatakot na nahawa, uh, may magdanakaw sa bahay nyo, ano mang emergency, gusto nyo magreklamo, may, kura- may nangungurakot sa inyong barangay, tumawag lang po kayo sa hotline 122. Ginawa na po namin simple and all of your concerns will be adequately addressed. May call center po kami sumasagot sa lahat po ng mga tawag ninyo at uh, lahat po ng mga concerns ninyo, binigyan po natin ng, ng time limit ang ating pong mga departamento para masagot ng maayos ang mga concerns ng mga mamamayan ng Lungsod Quezon. This is because I would like our city, city to be responsive to the needs of all of our people and I would like our people to feel that they can go to the city for any concern and their voices will be heard. No, I would like to make sure uh, that our workplace health and safety protocols are in place and if renovations have to take place para siguraduhin yung mga 
uh, nagtatrabaho po sa City Hall ay ligtas ay ating pong gagawin po ito. Um, we are currently working on an online operability of the Freedom of Information Ordinance. Meron po tayong ordinansa because again, I am an advocate, an advocate for good governance. Kailangan po talaga alam ng taong bayan anong, anong nangyayari sa ating, ating lungsod. Kailangan alam nila kung paano ginagastos ang pondo ng bayan at uh, Dati, uh, siyempre kailangan pa nilang magsumulat, pumunta dito sa City Hall, tignan ang mga papeles dito while it's open for them to see. Um, we would like to make it even easier for them to access information. Kaya gusto po natin as much as possible online na rin po ang mga importanteng informasyon na kailangan alamin ng mga mamamayan ng ating pong lungsod. Um, katulad na nabanggit ko, we will be reorganizing or rationalizing our various departments and we are going to be focusing, of course, on recruiting more frontliners and backliners. No? Pag sinabing backliners, ito naman po yung mga, um, yung mga SSDD natin, ito yung mga uh, enforcers natin ng traffic, ng public order, uh, ng, uh, at tulungan din po ang ating kapulisan at ang ating mga uh, fire departments, no? etc. And of course, to help our, uh, our, our workers in government, we would like them to feel that they are loved and cared for. Um, and so we will provide them continuously with free COVID and drug testing uh, dito po sa Lungsod, Quezon. So ito lang pong iilan sa ating pong mga uh, programa uh, na, na batay po sa karanasan natin sa COVID at uh, balak natin gawin para ma-overcome natin ang mga challenges. So sana po nakatulong po ito sa ating mga nakikinig. Maraming maraming pong salamat sa ngalan po ng mga mamamayan ng Lungsod Quezon. Thank you very much, Mayor Joy, for sharing with us all the admirable efforts of your city to improve the situation of your people in the midst of this uh, pandemic. Um, yeah, I'm sure our um, listeners, our participants would uh, want to know more. So uh, We'll be opening the floor now, okay, for questions. So we'll proceed to the open forum. Um, however, may I remind our um, participants that you can still uh, send your questions, okay? So you can still send your questions via Zoom, uh, the Zoom Q&A window, or uh, through our Facebook comments section. Okay, so let me check our, we have questions already, okay. All right, so, okay, so we have, uh, yeah, we have uh, several questions here already. So, yeah, we have, let me ask uh, this question to uh, both our mayors. All right, so uh, what would be the next steps that your LGU would take to strengthen your LGU's response and action should another um, pandemic, I think, occurs? So what would be the next uh, steps that your LGU would take to strengthen your LGU's response and action should another um, pan pandemic occur? So, yes, maybe uh, who would like to answer first? Mayor Joy, would you like to <laughs> yeah, answer yes. the question? Okay, well, as you know, um, there is already a second wave happening in the US, in Europe, and also I hear in parts of Asia. No? And so we believe, having spoken to some of the experts in the field, that a second wave is probably going to be inevitable here in the Philippines, given, of course, the way we celebrate the holiday season. So one, first and foremost, we are um, uh, issuing um, guidelines no, to holiday makers, mga revelers, mga families para magkaroon tayo ng tinatawag namin sa cuisine um, ligtas na uh, Pasko sa Quezon City. So magkakaroon po kami ng kampanya to, to teach our people how to be safer in celebrating the Christmas season. No? But uh, having said that, also we have to be prepared for a second wave. No? At ang ginagawa po ng lungsod is of course making sure na ang ating mga ospital are adequately equipped. So um, as of today, batay sa uh, datos na binigay ulit sa atin ng ating mga partners sa Akadim, eh, very low pa rin po ang ating pong um, usage ng bed spaces ng COVID. So much, much less than 50%. So it seems we're okay in that regard. Kung tumaas ng konti, mag-spike ng konti dahil nagtatuwaan nung Pasko, kaya pa naman ng mga uh, tatlong city-owned hospitals. And of course, napakaswerte natin kasi katulad ng binanggit ko, meron na rin po tayong one hospital command uh, wherein we have partnered with all the other hospitals as well or many of the hospitals in Quezon City na private as well as government para mas madali pa ang referral namin ng mga pasyente. Bukod dyan, 
quarantine facilities, we still have 2,000 beds. So tingin ko, okay pa naman yun. Um, 500 ang current active cases natin. So we have 1,500 as of now na hindi nagagamit. Contact Wala. tracers, we have more than 1,000 contact Wala. tracers. Um, meron na rin po tayong uh, app na ginagamit para mas mapadali ang contact tracing. We contact tracing, we contact trace about 15 uh, individuals per patient. We're trying to up that to about 20. Yan po ang goal namin sa Quezon City. Um, and, and we are prepared for that. No? Um, so testing, uh, may sarili na po tayong uh, molecular laboratory so tingin ko hindi na rin po tayo magkakaroon ng problema sa testing. So sa tingin ko basta sundan lang po natin yung um, yung testing, isolation, quarantine at uh, contact tracing, um, we will be able to handle any surges that might happen. Wag lang naman po yung sobrang dami. Pero kung maingat naman po tayo, we're expecting na gradual na, naman po ang magiging increase ng cases po natin come January. Thank you very much for your joy. That's good to know. Yes, let's, uh, um, yes, Miss, uh, yes, uh, we have uh, Mayor Jazz. Okay, so, yes, would you like to answer the question? Okay, um, yes, um, with regards to pandemic, um, we are going to have to build a multi-purpose hall for our isolation facility. Kasi ang nangyayari na sa amin ngayon, nagkakaroon lang kami ngayon ng bayanihan isolation facility. So, every barangay, pinagredit, pinagredi ko po yung mga kapitan na magkaroon ng isolation facility. Madali lang po kasi sa amin dahil yung bayan namin, hiwa-hiwalay ang mga bahay. So, hindi sila dikit-dikit. So, mas madali pong mag-isolate, mag-quarantine sa mga lugar, sa mga barangay nila uh, compared to other city na medyo mahirap po dikit-dikit yung ano nila. Yung, kumbaga yung... Um, yung security na hindi po naaalis doon, yung kababayan natin doon sa quarantine facility, medyo tame po sa amin. Uh, Kung baga, um, namamanage po ng aming barangay council. So, uh, nakikita ko na hindi pa rin tapos ang pandemic na to at there is a possibility na uh, sa maunti lang po aming COVID cases eh. Pero there is still a possibility na mag-jump siya. So, kaya meron po kami ngayon na 2 million multipurpose hall just to uh, make it an isolation facility. And uh, with regards po dun sa aming testing, tuloy-tuloy uh, po um, kaka kakakuha ko lang po nung MOA between the IMUS uh, molecular facility, yung IMUS hospital, at doon po, meron po kami 340,000 worth of slots po, testing slots for PCR. Kaya yun po, medyo um, okay na po kami. Hindi na po kailangan maghintay sa province ng uh, slot namin kasi yung provincial government po namin yung uh, nagmamanage po dito ng testing namin and to mass testing. And then um, there is also one hospital command na in the province and we are very grateful to that. At uh, with regards naman po being resilient in the future, in the future pandemic, in the future disasters, uh, right now, actually today, ngayon po at saka bukas, we are now having uh, CDP planning kasi po i-integrate uh, na po namin yung mga other disasters, the infectious disease into our plans. So uh, ngayon po nagkakaroon po kami ng workshop together with our department heads and other um, CSOs into um, amending our uh, plans into resiliency. And then, um, nais ko din pong patatagin yung aming incident command system training. Kasi po meron po kaming, uh, right now, we are uh, level 2 into ICS training. So hanggang 5 po ito. At balak po namin tapusin yun para mas uh, equip yung aming uh, uh, department heads, yung aming employees, yung aming mga tao into uh into disasters and um other infectious diseases like this one like the pandemic and um meron din po kaming information dissemination sa mga barangay naman po namin especially empower po yung lahat ng mga barangay para maging handa like sa um contingency planning in taal eruption and infectious diseases thank you po 
Thank you din, Mayor Jazz. Um, it's good to know no, na prepared okay, ang ating mga LGU for just in case na magkaroon tayo ng uh, second wave. Now, I have here um, a specific question for uh, Mayor Jazz. How will uh, the Farmers Forum be conducted under the pandemic condition when there's weak connection in their respective areas and not all of them have the appropriate phones to connect to, to connect them to the forum? So, oh, ang ginawa namin with the Farmers Forum ay um, clustering. So, yung mga cooperatives po namin, mga existing cooperatives po namin, nag-conduct pa rin po kami ng Farmers Forum, pero um, like 50% capacity lang of the, of the place. And uh, we strictly implement health protocols. So thank you very much for that for that clarification. And I have here also um, a specific question for Mayor Joy. Um, you've mentioned po before that you did budget realignment. How did you realign the budget? Aling mga programs yung mga nababawasan and how were you able to prioritize the programs? So well, with regard to Oh, the same budget ng 2020 na pasan na yan, wala pa po yung COVID. No? So um, this was an expect, an, something unexpected and something that we really had to, um, to respond to. So ang ginawa po natin, of course, it's our department heads that created the recovery plan. Hindi naman po tayo. It's the department heads that uh, were the ones that they themselves were the ones that, that identified ano ba yung mga projects na dati nasa uh, Poder nila, natingin nila pwede mapospone in favor of others that are of greater priority, etc. So sila po mismo ang gumawa ng recovery plan. No? And of course, itong recovery plan na pinopost ng ating executive department ay, ay inaral pa po ng ating sangguni ang pandunsod uh, based on their particular uh, experiences and knowledge of the situation. No? So um, maayos po ang documentation nito, maayos din po ang mga proseso nito as it should be. No? And very transparent din po ang naging um, paggawa namin ng, 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 ng ganito. No? So, in fact, sabi nga ng COA sa amin, do not use the word realign. So, that's a new thing that we learned, Ma'am Everly. We should use now the word reprogram. So, uh, yan, po ang, yan po ang ginawa namin. Mm -mm. But it doesn't mean that na hindi na po mangyayari yung mga pro project na ating pong pinan, uh, sinantabi pansamantala. So, for example, I would say, um, ang ilan sa mga um, na postpone muna natin is infrastructure. Like for example, pagpapagawa halimbawa ng bagong barangay hall para kay barangay A. Eh maganda pa naman yung barangay niya kung kaya pa naman 1 to 2 years na mapospone, wag muna natin gastusan. Yan, gastusan na muna natin ang mas mahahalaga mga bagay. So ito yung mga halimbawa ng ating mga na-reprioritize na mga projects. Okay. Thank you very much din po for that uh, clarification. And now, uh, let's move on to... Uh, yung uh, we still have a few more questions here for both uh, our mayors. Um, yeah, so this one. So if you are to estimate the impact of the pandemic in your community, how big do you think the impact was? And how long do you think until you can recover the loss incurred during the, uh, due to the pandemic? So how big do you think is the, yeah, how big was the impact and how long do you think um, you can recover the loss in per okay due to the pandemic. Uh, Mayor Joy, would you like to answer yeah. first this time? So, yeah. Um, you know, ma'am, it's very hard to quantify in terms of figures the impact because ang laki ng pag sinabi mong impact hindi lang naman yan pera. Hindi ba? Kasama na yung mental health. Kasama na yung mga pamilya naghiwalay o kaya yung pamilya na, na nahirapan. No? I mean, there are so many other issues when you talk about impact. No? But I guess, I guess the, question, the questioner is, is, a, is a re, referring to money. Kung pondo pong pinag-uusapan, baka next year pa po talaga natin malalaman yung full impact. Kasi yan yung bayaran ng buwis for 2020, um, ba? So, do natin malalaman talaga yung full impact. But having said that, the city is already has already in fact passed several ordinances to make things easier for our businessmen to cope no with the pandemic. Uh, we've we've um 
I, I can't enumerate them kasi medyo madami siya. Pero marami ng measures na naipasa para lang masigurado na yung, yung susunod na taon ay hindi hindi magiging pahirap pa sa ating mga negosyante. Kasi kailangan magtulungan. At medyo na-condition na rin natin ang mga isipan ng ating mga mamamayan na baka ang ating budget for the next uh, year will not be the same as this year. no But um, I think that the full impact monetarily-wise is... Um, still, we're still unable to calculate that as of now, especially since the pandemic is still ongoing and we are still giving ayuda and we are still um, mit- doing mitigating ma- and containment measures even as we speak today. No? And it must be really challenging given that, given that uh, Quezon City is the biggest city in, in Metro Manila. So now, in the case of uh, Mayor Jazz, how about in the experience of Magallanes? How, how big is the impact? So um like Mayor Joy po no uh, yung big uh, kasi maraming factors eh hindi lang naman ay uh, trabaho so we we're, we're talking about the families yung uh, mental issues nga um pero sa tingin ko sa bayan ng Magallanes because we are an agricultural municipality hindi kami industrial uh, city or municipality Medyo nung nagkaroon ng pandemic, uh, nag-survive talaga ang mga ang community ng Magallanes kasi may meron kaming pagkain dito. Hindi agad kami nagutom dahil uh, kumbaga sa backyard namin, sa mga um, sa mga malaki kasi ang agricultural land namin dito. So uh, hindi problema ang pagkain. Actually kami pa yung nagbibigay ng pagkain to other municipalities and other nearby uh, cities. So um, I think in for one year or two years na meron lang po kaming right support from the national government and from other um, agencies, national agencies and provincial government. Sa tingin ko po, one to two years, makakabangon naman kami. And um, dahil naman ayos naman po yung recovery, meron na kami economic recovery plan. Uh, sa tingin ko, hindi muna nga yung development plan. Like yung 20% development fund po namin talagang na focus sa COVID-19 response. And um, okay lang po yun kasi um, it can wait. The development projects can wait. Pero yung kailangan po ng mga tao, yung pangangailangan ng taong bayan dahil kailangan nila ang pondo. Like what Mayor Joy have said na binibigyan pa rin natin until now ng ayuda yung ating mga kababayan. Um, Doon po siguro hindi uh, hindi ganun pa muna ma- madidelay muna yung pagpapagawa natin in terms of infrastructure. Pero sabi nga niya, um, malalaman pa rin po natin yung impact in terms of economy, in terms of yung mga RPT, yung mga taxes uh, in the years to come pa, maybe next year. Thank you very much. And uh, we have here another question for both our mayors. How do you intend to sustain the programs implemented during the ECQ or GCQ to support your constituents after the pandemic? And then uh, a follow-up question is, what support is necessary aside from financial support from national government and private organizations? So Mayor Jazz, maybe you can answer first this time. I think so very how- vital. Apa, yes. Uh, I think very vital na yon yung livelihood program no. Uh, mabigyan natin ng livelihood program yung mga kababayan natin. And then uh, para at least yung mga nawala ng trabaho, uh, maging maging mga negosyante sa law or entrepreneur para at least they can uh, they can stand on their own and slowly they can go back on their own feet. So, yun po, uh, napaka-importante ng trabaho. And at the same time, you give basic necessity, like dito po sa bayan namin, uh, binibigay pa rin namin yung basic social services na kailangan po ng mga taong bayan. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Joy, would you like to answer also that uh, question? Um, how do you intend to sustain the programs implemented during the ECQ or GCQ to support your constituents um, but- after the pandemic? Yeah, well, I, I mentioned a lot of programs. Maybe I'll just focus on one or two. So the first, I would say, would be the farming. And it's important kasi na kailangan 
um, you have to plan from beginning to end. Ano yung beginning? Kailangan, you have to generate interest among the people. And then you have to be able to provide them their needs, their starter kits, their seeds, their greenhouses, their seedlings, their, their seedling trays, their um, organic fertilizer if needed. And then you have to find them their land and you have to help talk to the landowners, di ba? And then after that, you have to, um, siguro, you have to enter into partnerships like with Jollibee or other um, uh, restaurants so that mapapurchase din naman yung gulay na, uh, na, 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 na tataniman nila, di ba? So, I mean, in, in other words, it's about you have, when you plan a project, kailangan from beginning to end, um, nakikita mo na sa utak mo how it will work. No, tapos, um, then you just tweak along the way uh, based on whether something is successful or not successful. And um, I stand by that particular um, that particular strategy because this urban farming project of ours has already been existing for more than 10 years. So it's just a matter of scaling it up. No? So um, that's one. And then ito namang isa sa tingin kong napaka-importante sa akin itong bike lanes program na to. Um, if we're able to build the right infrastructure, sabi nga ni Kevin Costner, halatang edad ko, but if you build it, they will come. So if you build the bike lanes, dati sinasabi, hindi magbibisikleta yung Pilipino kasi gusto niya sa, sa, nakasakay siya sa kotse, naka-aircon. Naka Pero now, nakikita naman natin na ang dami-daming nagbibisikleta. Kailangan lang talaga the infrastructure is there, the support from the government is there, may signages. It has to be clear na if you're a car and you, you will go you cross that line and you 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 end up driving on the bike lane may penalty ka ha kasi you have to respect the bikers because they have as much right over that 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 road as you do no so kailangan lang talaga na yung support mo sa isang programa ay 100% mong ibibigay at tingin ko magiging matagumpay siya thank you po and uh, yeah we mapunta naman po tayo sa ating mga seniors okay because uh, this question i think is intended for yeah, you ating mga seniors. How do you deal with social and mental health problems of the elderly and also the youth na rin who were subjected to the extended community quarantine? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so Mayor Joy, can you answer that for us? <laughs> yeah, first. So how do you deal with the social and mental health problems of the elderly and the youth who were subjected to the extended community quarantine? So many have already been affected. I mean, yung kanilang mental health. Ang tagal na po na naka-lockdown ng mga, <laughs> ng mga elderly natin and even the youth. Yes, Paul. Well, in terms of the elderly, first with regards to their health, one of the things that we did was while it's not the same, I nag-invest po kami sa flu and pneumonia vaccines para po sa mga elderly to protect them. So kahit na hindi ito COVID vaccine, still, at least hindi sila magkaka-pneumonia kung nakontract nila yung disease. Isa yun sa mga health uh, interventions namin. And of course, patuloy pa namin binibigay yung kanilang mga pangangala, pangangailangan in terms of their maintenance drugs, yung hinahatid namin sa mga bahay nila, etc. Now, what we've done was we've talked to the barangays. Kasi kung yung, kung yung barangay naman is sheltered at pwede namang lumabas si elderly para makipag-usap sa kanyang kapwa um, elderly for one hour a day, pinapayagan po namin yan para sa kanyang peace of mind at saka sa kanyang mental health. Pinapayagan naman po natin yan provided that they are equipped with all of the necessary um, paraphernalia like face shields and face masks. And one of my projects was early on was to distribute face masks to every single senior citizen in Quezon City. Washable po yan, dalawa po yan, so wala pong dahilan para hindi po siya, pwede, pwede, hindi po siya gagamit ng face mask. No? So yun naman medyo lax naman po tayo sa ganong klaseng mga bagay. And of course, sa ayon naman sa IATF, pinapayagan naman yung senior lumabas kung siya talagang inaasahan para sa mga um, essential goods, no? para bumili ng essential goods, provided of course na hindi na siya um, gumala, maglakwat siya, basta pumunta lang siya sa mall, sa grocery bumili at umuwi ka agad. Pinapayagan naman niya ng IATF. No? And we're, we're, we also allow that of course. No? Sa kabataan naman, alam mo ba, that I noticed that as long as that child has um, a gadget, 
ay okay lang pala yung bata. <laughs> Hindi katulad natin, uh, doc, doctor, that we have to go out and play. But having said that, uh, we also still encourage the same. Kung pwede naman lumabas yung bata, dun lang sa langsangan, sarap ng bahay para makapaglaro sa kapwa bata, hindi na po tayo nagiging strict to dito. No? Um, basta hindi siya uh, pumunta sa mga tinatagurian natin dangerous areas kung saan pwede sila mahawa. We're, we're, we're not that strict with that reg- in that regard. Mm-hmm. I see. Okay. Oo oh, nga pala, I forgot to mention, meron tayong Quarantox. <laughs> yeah, this is something that's a development namin sa OSCA namin at saka sa DepEd po namin. We provide um, Zumba classes online para po sa mga seniors natin. Meron din po tayong mga arts and crafts um, classes para po sa mga seniors na nasa bahay. No? At iba pa mga lectures para po sa kanila to keep them um, entertained. At uh, ganun din po sa mga kabataan natin. We have quarant talks for our children to, to help them, to keep them entertained uh, while they're not in school and so they can still continue to to learn uh, even when they're in their homes. That's wonderful to know po na may mga ganun tayo mga initiatives for our seniors, our elderly, okay, and our youth. How about in uh, Magallanes, uh, Mayor Jazz? <laughs> So in Magallanes po, um, the very may uh, the very one of the purpose of establishing the Magallanes News Channel, yung aming life and entertainment, maligayang buhay, is to entertain the seniors and yung mga youth po natin na quarantine. Meron po tayo dito yung parapol, uh, meron din po tayong mga games na in- inilagay po dito para po at least malibang naman. Um, sa maligayang buhay, meron din po kaming night of music kung saan pwede pong manood doon yung mga senior citizen natin, yung mga kabataan taan natin makijamming din po doon pero uh, this is virtually ano ho? virtually so facebook live uh, another is meron din po kaming zumba activity so physical exercise pero virtually din po na pwede pong uh, sumabay doon yung mga senior citizens natin yung mga kabataan din po natin so i think yung use of technology digitization na tinatawag po na minaximize po namin since wala po tayong face-to-face um, activity sa ating mga kababayan. So with this one, the Magallanes News Channel, the Maligayang Buhay, we can still provide entertainment para naman po sa ating mga senior and sa mga youth po natin. Okay, alright. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, information. And we have here a uh, question specifically for Mayor Joy. So I think since our we have uh, our biggest universities are um, in Quezon City. So what steps, measures, or policies are in place to ensure that when students will be back in the campuses, they will be safe? This question is from our OIC dean, okay, Dr. Bakong, please. Yes. Sorry. So, Hi, Dean. So your question is, how do we know that they will be safe? Yes, no? So first of well, first and foremost, it is not the decision of the city government to allow kids to go back to school. It is, of course, the decision of the IATF. No? So sumusunod lang naman tayo sa kanilang uh, tingin kong pagpasya kung safe na o hindi ang ating mga kabataan na bumalik sa kanilang mga classrooms. Uh, pero sa amin naman, ang iniisip namin kung papayagan ng DepEd ay una, dapat yung blended learning ipagpatuloy na no kahit na pinapayagan na mag bumalik sa school no i discussed this with our deaf ed um hindi ibig sabihin yung blended na ngayon ha na hindi talaga sila pumapasok meaning maybe thrice a week they can go to class and then um the ne- the two week two days of the week they can stay home and do online classes or do modular classes parang um that's one thing that we were thinking of no para then to minimize crowds in the school para uh, alternate yung pagpasok ng bata sa klase. Isa yun sa ating naiisip na solusyon. Pangalawa, katulad ng nabanggit ko dito sa Quezon City, one uh, reason why I think our children are at risk of infectious diseases is because walang sapat na hand washing facilities. So this is now the priority of the city government. Habang wala pa po sila sa klase, nire-renovate na po namin ang kanilang mga classroom at ang kanilang mga CR to make sure na meron tayong uh, sapat na washing facilities para sa kanila. So what, that when they go back to school, um, they are trained kasi train mo nga sila maghugas ng kamay, wala namang tubig. 
um, kailangan meron silang sapat na uh, panghugas na kamay. And we're working actually with Maynila and Manila Water to make this happen for our school children. So at the moment, I think these are the, the best ways to keep them safe. But I, I would like to stress that I don't think the IATF will allow our children to go back to school if there is even an iota of threat to their safety. Thank you very much, Ma. Ayan. So here we have a question from Dr. Um, Aileen Matitan, one of our faculty members. So this question is for both our mayors. May effort po ba to look into gender differentiated risks and vulnerabilities among constituents? It would be good to learn whether there are intentional efforts to mitigate any growing welfare gaps as a result of pandemic. Yes, Mayor Jazz, perhaps you can answer first this time. Um, what's the question again? Sorry. Meron po ba tayong may effort po ba to look into gender differentiated risks and vulnerable vulnerabilities among constituents? Mm -hmm. So meron um, into gender differentiated risks and vulnerabilities because uh, as mentioned by Dr. Aileen, it would be good to learn whether there are intentional efforts to mitigate any growing welfare gaps as a result of pandemic. Okay. Um, siguro, um, uh, the very reason for us to be uh, equal is education. And uh, right now, yung education natin is also triggered by uh, this situation, yung pandemic. Dahil hindi pa rin natin alam kung online education will give uh, uh, best impact with our students. So I think um, the best way is to make sure, the local government unit should make sure na natututo pa rin yung mga kabataan natin uh, sa, uh, with this kind of um, way of learning, the online education. Kaya um, sa akin, napakahalaga yung data na malaman ko kung sino yung mga hindi pa rin nagbabasa, kung sino yung hindi pa rin uh, nakakasulat para at least uh, makagawa tayo ng intervention on how can we help them better. Thank you, uh, Mayor Jazz. And then Mayor Joy. Yeah, um, I pagkaintindi ko yung question is about gender differentiation ng sakit no, yeah. of COVID and how it affects uh, men vis-a-vis -vis women. Um, well, like I already mentioned earlier in my presentation, um, based on the data that I read, is that um, in first world countries, this is so interesting, but in the first world countries, the divorce rate has gone up because of this pandemic. No, dahil yung mga mag-asawa na dating hindi naman sanay na magkasama sila ng 24-7, ay bigla na lang magkasama na ng 24-7, nag-aaway na at nag-divorce. Sa atin naman dahil walang divorce, ang nangyari ay tumaas ang domestic violence. So 20% ang tinaas ng violence against women dahil sa pandemic na ito. No? At syempre, dahil ma siguro mainit ang ulo ni Mr. Ninanag ni Mrs. I don't know. I, that's very, in fact, that's very sexist. That remark. So baka another way, another way around. Ano man ang dahilan ay um, ang, ang kababaihan talaga ang naging biktima dito sa pandemic na ito. Also, the second is pag sinabi na sa bahay kasi yung bata, nag-aaral nag sa bata, alam naman alam naman natin na um, the child needs parental guidance, right? Because the teacher can only do so much uh, from from the from from an online class. So it's the mother that usually has to stay home and help the child and tutor the child at the expense of her going to work and earning uh, a living, no? So nawawala yung kanyang economic uh, uh, empowerment dahil uh, dahil sa kanyang maternal responsibilities. Tapos pangatlo pag sinabi mong um, alternate sino ba sa atin ang mag work from home? Usually si nanay ang mag work from home just because of our culture being the way it is, no? So siya yung magi-give up ngayon ng ng or or kung hindi man work from home, sino yung magdi-display sa ating dalawa? Probably it will be the mother. No? So um, this is this is of course based on very partial information that I have received so far, but it seems to me that women really are uh, more uh, disadvantaged by the pandemic than men, and therefore um, 
uh, like I mentioned earlier in one of in in um, that, that section on um, interventions, we are really intervening more towards providing livelihood opportunities for women, um, and that's why we're working more with women NGOs, with women um, organizations, because we want to empower uh, our women given the situation that has been brought upon them due to the pandemic. And um, like I mentioned, also we have set up a shelter for women that have been victims of domestic violence. Na kung talagang hirap na hirap na sila, they can um, go to our shelter and we can take and, and we can look after them, provide them with a livelihood, and if necessary, help them to start a new life um, without that that abusive partner. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, sa ating mga mayors, um, as much as we would like to answer um, the remaining questions, um, we're we have very limited time, so we're down to our last uh, question. Um, as a, uh, yeah, we have a question here from our from one of our participants. As a QC uh, citizen, I commend Mayor Joy for considering domestic abuse and other gender-based violence in the city's efforts to address the impacts of the pandemic to our families and communities. To both mayors, may I ask po, what other efforts or programs do your respective local governments have in place to ensure that human rights of your constituents are protected against abuses, even those from the forces of the state itself? So, yeah, yeah. Mayor Joy, perhaps uh, yeah, you can answer this. Yeah, you know, that's a very good question. And I'd really like to commend whoever asked that question. But this was a very challenging time. And I, I, I have been in forums with other mayors from other countries. Um, and you know in the States that it's even worse you know, because um, there's an issue of race. And there's an issue of gender, and there's an issue of um, even of, of sexuality there that, that has... Um, affected the the equality of, of the way or, or human rights um, in general no sa atin talagang challenge yon kasi ang hirap talaga na meron kang gustong i-enforce halimbawa mask wearing ba tapos hindi siya naka-mask so may mga enforcers ka kasi meron ka namang ordinansa so kailangan mo ngayon um siguraduhin na sumunod siya at minsan ang hirap ng ang nahihirapan ng enforcer na i-draw ang line kung ano ba ang pwede at hindi niya pwedeng gawin. So what we did, because we had that problem, I'm sure if you're from Quezon City, you know that we've had that problem. And I'm not going to hide that, that we did have that problem, that our enforcers, sometimes they they cross the line, may, may sinaktan sila na dapat hindi nila sinaktan, may ginawa sila na dapat hindi nila ginawa from a human rights perspective. no? And we recognize that. Kaya ang ginawa namin, gumawa kami ng tinatawag na OVR. Ito yung um, Ordinance Violation Receipt. No. So kung meron nakita na hindi sumusunod, hindi nagso-social distance, kahit na may batas tayo na kailangan talaga mag-maintain ng, ng social distancing, hindi sila naka-face mask kahit na meron tayong face mask wearing ordinance, we get, rather than um, um, you know, shout at them verbally, treat them badly, uh, or, or ano man, um, physically manhandle them, we, we give them a um, ordinance violation receipt tapos nakasulat lang doon yung violation nila tapos may multa po yan dati po yung multa 1,000 pesos tingin ko very very hindi naman makatao yung 1,000 pesos ang hirap-hirap na ng buhay diba? at ang gusto lang naman natin sumunod siya so binaba po natin yung multa uh, na mababa lang talaga siya I think it's 200 pesos lang yata eh. uh, kung hindi ako nagkakamali tapos bibigay lang sa kanya yan tapos kailangan lang talaga niyang bayaran yung multa para mawala ang police record niya otherwise meron siyang police record no at he might not think that's important but if this man decides or this woman decides to apply for a job syempre hahanapin yung kanyang clearance police clearance tsaka niya malalaman na ay sana binayaran ko nga pala yung multa ko nung hindi ako nags ng mask. So I think that's a more humane way of addressing the issue of human rights. Um, and this is something that we really thought of. Um, kaya sa nagtanong na yan, maraming salamat sa tanong mo. Nata, napakalapit sa puso ko yung issue ng human rights and I really wanted to find a way to solve this issue. And ito po yung naging solusyon namin doon. No? Um, 
But having said that, isa rin sa mga gusto kong banggitin ngayon na nagiging problema ay eh, meron tayong isang bata sa Quezon City. Ito yung sa, sa mga market vendors. Kasi alam naman natin na may clearing operations na inutos sa atin ang ating Pangulo. Uh, na kailangan yung sidewalk ay tanggalin natin yung mga vendors na naan doon. Alam mo, ang hirap-hirap nun talaga kasi saan natin ilalagay yung mga vendors na gahanap buhay lang sila. Kulang ang mga pwesto sa loob ng palengke. No? Tapos ayon sa ordinansa na hindi ko pinasap, dati pa yon minana ko, dun sa ordinansa, tatang, ika-confiscate pala lahat ng kanilang binibenta. And I found that very violative of human rights really. Kasi that's something na pinuhunan nila. Um, kahit na sila ay nasa maling pwesto, still dapat hindi natin kinoconfiscate. So I'm in the process of working with my sanggunian to amend that particular ordinance. Again, OVR na lang. Ordinance violation receipt na lang ulit ang ibibigay natin sa kanila para hindi iko-confiscate yung kanilang mga uh, tinda. Tapos ang gagawin natin ay itong mga vendors, ipaparegister natin sila sa city government. At kapag nag-register ka sa city government, may ID ka at mag-a-assign kami ng pwesto sa iyo na legal vending site. So yan ang ating uh, sagot dito sa problema naman ng, ng illegal vending. So thank you for that question. And thank you very much, Nipo, for answering that and also for ensuring that uh, yeah, the human rights of your constituents are protected. Yes, so now let's hear from Mayor Jazz. Mayor Jazz. Yes, um, with regards to the municipality of Magallanes, uh, we have a zero crime rate here in our municipality. Mm -hmm. So, but we ensure that there is Vowsy desk in each barangay where they can file their complaints. Sa mga uh, meron po kami mga katarungan pang barangay, and uh, we have also the committee on uh, peace and order in terms of in in the barangay level. And with regards to the forces of the state itself, um, meron din po kami technical working group that handles grievances. Uh, sa mga pulis po namin. Halimbawa, uh, merong ginawa yung PNP namin and it composed of uh, CSOs and um, local government unit. The local government unit and the CSOs. All right. Thank you very much. Ayan. So once again, thank you very much to our mayors for answering generously the questions of our participants and our um, viewers okay, for this uh, webinar. Again, as much as we would like to accommodate all of the questions sent to us, okay, since we have limited time, we can, cannot, uh, we cannot uh, um, ask all of the questions. So what we can do is we will forward okay, your questions to our mayors. All right. So now moving on, okay, let's proceed to um, yeah, the awarding, okay, of uh, certificates. So, yeah, yeah, can we uh, flash our certificates? All right, so there you go. Now, let me read, okay, the citation. Um, the Center for Strategic Planning and Policy Studies, College of Public Affairs and Development, University of the Philippines, Los Baños, presents this uh, certificate of appreciation to Honorable Jasmine Angeli M. Maligaya Bautista, Mayor Magallanes Cavite, for serving as resource person in the CSPPS webinar series on LGU governance and policy titled Moving Forward from the COVID-19 Pandemic on November 24, 2020, College of Public Affairs and Development, University of the Philippines, Los Baños, College, Laguna. Signed, Merlin M. Paunlagi, Director, CSPPS, and Rowena D. Tibacongis, OIC Dean, SIPAF. Thank you very much once again, uh, Mayor Jass, okay, for serving as our uh, resource person, okay, one of our resource persons this afternoon. And we have here uh, the Certificate of Appreciation, okay, for Honorable Josefina G. Belmonte, Mayor, Quezon City, okay, for serving as resource person in the CSPPS webinar series on LGU governance and policy titled Moving forward from the COVID-19 pandemic on November 24, 2020, College of Public Affairs and Development, University of the Philippines, Los Baños, College, Laguna. Signed, Merlin M. Paunlagi, Director, CSPPS, and Rowena D. Tibacongis, OIC Dean, SIPA. Thank you very much once again, uh, Mayor Joy Belmonte, for being one of our resource persons this afternoon. Okay. All right, so just a few reminders. 
Okay. Oh no, sorry. Let me have uh, first. Uh, let's have first Dr. Paunlagi for her closing remarks before I give some uh, final reminders. Okay, to our participants. Yes, Dr. Okay. Paunlagi. Thank you very much, Dr. Ebili. But let me thank the two mayors, the two wonderful mayors, uh, for um, this uh, attending this seminar, for uh, accepting our invitation for this uh, webinar series. Um, have you noticed that both of them starts with the letter J, Jazz and J? So thank you very much, Mayor Jazz and J. So for my synthesis and closing remarks, we have witnessed the strategies and the, how they responded to the effect of pandemic and how they are now moving forward in response to the pandemic. And as you have witnessed, Municipality of Magallanes is a fourth class municipality, while the other one is a first class uh, city and one of the biggest in Metro and the biggest in Metro Manila. Both of them are well grounded. They know very well what is the situation. So it was not difficult for them to adapt strategies in response to the COVID pandemic. I would like to highlight some of the uh, key points that they have both raised. One is the importance of database for identifying target uh, beneficiaries. One is the CBMS for Magallanes and the push to have the census of population to be conducted. That was repeated several times by both mayors, the importance of data. And uh, we are happy with that because at the College of Public Affairs, we also um, always remind our students of an evidence-based decision making. In terms of moving forward, they have adapted strategies, innovative as well as the, what they have been doing that have proven to be successful and also adapting other strategies which the other local government units have adapted. For example, Mayor Belmonte mentioned about the ID system which is being implemented uh, in the city of Makati. So you don't have to invent the wheel. You have to adapt what is working well uh, that is existing and working very well. Uh, Doctor uh, uh, Mayor just mentioned about Magallanes News Channel. So it is an innovation from the municipality of Magallanes. And also uh, Mayor um, Joy mentioned about the hotline or she has talked about something that, that is addressing the boredom or the uh, health um, uh, situation of both the youth and the elderly. Another strategy that they have adapted, which I think our uh, Institute for Governance and Rural Development would be happy is the involvement of the civil society, the private sector, and the people's organization in responding to the um, uh, pandemic, as well as how they will move forward. They have also mentioned the importance of integrating hazards and risks which have not been done before because we have not really uh, experienced the COVID pandemic, I mean, as serious as this one. So now they are integrating this to their development plans. And the city of Quezon City has also introduced uh, innovative, I think this is not in innovative, but the approach is quite different with the in-city resettlement. We have learned the failures of the resettlement programs before because moving from urban to rural areas have so many negative effects. So this one is most welcome. We have also heard about emphasis on urban agriculture. Also Mayor um, Jazz emphasized the importance of agriculture in the municipality of Magallanes. We have also heard bike lanes. This has been proposed so many times before, but it seems that it is working now. And so they're capitalizing on this one. How about reclaiming the pedestrian lane? I, uh, and also the sidewalks. I think uh, this is very important. And lastly, what I'd like to point out is the importance of having policies. These were, bo these were both mentioned by our two uh, distinguished mayors. And with that, before I, um, my closing remarks is really more of thanking the people 
who made this webinar this afternoon possible. Thank you to the OIC Dean, uh, Dr. Weng Bakungis, uh, Dr. Ebili Serrano, who has re uh, readily accepted our invitation to the CSPPS staff, Danica, Francis, Maris, Tessa, Karen, Haji, uh, Lenny, Marin, and uh, who else did I miss? But also the KMO staff, who, Ruth, and not and last but not the least is Sir Eric Dow from the ITC. So with that, thank you very much for a very fruitful uh, sharing of experience from the both great ladies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much also, Dr. Paul Dagi, for that excellent synthesis of uh, yeah, uh, our discussions okay, this uh, afternoon. Now, just a few reminders okay, for our uh, participants to secure your um, e-certificates, kindly accomplish the evaluation form that could be accessed at the link being flashed on the screen. Now, this link um, yeah, is also posted at the chat section of Zoom and uh, the comment section of Facebook Live. So you have it here on the screen so you can access the evaluation form okay, through this link. So please accomplish the said form on or before November 25, 2020. So the link will no longer be available after the said date. Okay, so again, um, yeah, so if you have not received, okay, your certificates by then, according to um, this uh, CSPPS, please email us at csppscpaf.uplb at up.edu.ph. So once again, uh, you may email, okay, CSPPS at csppscpaf.uplb at up.edu.ph. Thank you very much for attending our webinar. So it's been, all in all, a productive um, afternoon with our wonder women, okay, Mayor Jas Maligaya Bautista of Magallanes Capite and Mayor Joy Belmonte of Quezon City. So this has been your moderator, Ebony Sarano. Thank you very much once again for attending our webinar. Please join us, okay, next time. Let's all stay safe and healthy. Thank you, Mayor Joy and Mayor Jas. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul.